This is the second video covering Activity 6 of Martle Pool College. Just a reminder when you're doing these forms, don't change tables, the data types or add any validation to the tables. We're working just on the forms. Let's just read through and see what we've got to do. We need to create an input form to add the results of a fixture and view statistics. So the form should not include validation of any fields. The form should not include an automated routine to save data. The user should be able to select the team name from a drop down box that displays only the fixtures that do not yet have any results. The user should be able to enter the goals scored by Martlepool College, goals for. The user should be able to enter the goals scored by the opposition, goals against. The result of the fixture should be generated and displayed as win, loss or draw for Martlepool College. The overall number of goals for Martlepool College should be displayed, including the results of the current fixture, and the overall number of goals against Martlepool College should be displayed, including the results of the current fixture. So this is an example of the type of form we're going to create. A title, instructions to the users, the user is going to be able to select a team, but only for those teams where there's no results, i.e. the game hasn't played yet. We're going to enter the goals for, the goals against, and then it will display the result, whether it's a win, loss or draw. And it will work out the overall goals for and the overall goals against, including the goals that are in input here. You'll notice I've got the instructions to the user with the red asterisk and the controls that the user is not allowed to enter anything have been disabled. And then a couple of other things, I've just used lines to break up the form and also you'll notice I'm using the same house style that I used in the first form and in the report for part A. So we're in the database now, we're going on to create and this time I'm going to use form design. And here we've got a blank form. Let's just pull this in a bit because we'll be using the property sheet. The first thing I'm going to do is put on all the controls and then carry out some formatting.
We've now got our form formatted with all the controls on. Next thing I'm going to do is name the controls for the goals for and the goals against. Next thing to do is to change the select team control into a drop down so that the user can select the team and it's a team that there's no result for. So in the criteria row, in the goals for, we want is null. And also for the goals against, we want is null as well. And that will pick us out the teams that have got no result in either the for or against. Now, I'm going to format this control. It's got a column count of one. I'm going to turn that to two. That's the first two columns from our query. But I'm going to put the first column as naught centimetres and the second column as three centimetres. And that should just display the team names in the drop down. So we're in form view now. If we click on the drop down, we've only got those teams. Obviously, this needs widening because it's truncated some of the names of the teams. I'm going to work out the result, and for this, we're going to use an if. So equals if open bracket and the first thing we're going to do is work out if it's a win and from this uh, we're going to say if the txt goals for is greater than the txt goals against so we're going to say if txt goals for greater than txt goals against, then that's going to be a win. Then we need another if now to work out if it's a loss. So we're going to use another if. And this time we're going to see it's the opposite way around. If the goals for are less than the goals against, And if that's true, then that's going to be a loss. And if none of those are true, then it must be a draw. So we're just going to put in draw. And close two brackets. So just to recap that, we're saying if txt goals for are greater than txt goals against, that's going to be a win. Then we've got another if, if txt goals for are less than txt goals against, then that's a loss, otherwise it's a draw. We're now going to work out the overall goals for and overall goals against. And to be able to do that, we need to go to TBL fixture. We need to add up all these goals for, and we also need to add up the goals against. And we're going to use the dsum function for this. Uh, 
and the first thing of the DSUM is to tell the database which field we need to look in first. We're doing goals for, so open quote, goals for. then a comma, and we tell it which domain or which table we want to use. So let's just recap, equals dsum, and in the dsum the first thing is we tell it which field we want to add up, then a comma, and then we say from which table that field is in. And then so that's the end of the D sum, and we need to add to that the TXT goals for. Just a quick test on this. If the goals for are zero, the to overall goals for are 43. If we change this to a one, it's changed the overall goals. For. We're going to do a similar calculation for the overall goals against. Obviously, this time. We're adding up the goals against from TBL fixture and we're going to add to that this TXT goals against. So here we've got equals D sum open bracket and then we're looking this time in the goals against field. So that's in quotes goals against Markle pool, close quotes, comma then the domain or the table in which we're searching, so in quotes, TBL fixture. Close the brackets, so that's the end of the D sum, and plus TXT goals against. To zero, the overall goals against is 41. If we just change that to a one, and you can see that the overall goals have now gone to 42. The final thing I'm going to do is just disable these controls where the results and the goals for and goals against because the user should not be able to enter data into these controls. That completes our form to input results. Next video is going to cover testing, interface testing for the forms.